Hi everyone. This is episode six. Would you like to state your name for the record? Eric Velasky. All right. Uh, so, Eric, welcome. Uh, thank, you. thank you for coming on. Let's talk about first. Give me some info about you. The fans want to know <laughs> about you, what you do, you know, every, everything that you'd like to share. Sure. Um, so I am currently at Crane um, for my master's degree. Um, I went to Crane as an undergrad um, for um, four years, and then I had the chance to get some experience of being an actual teacher. So I um, taught some elementary general music, some instrumental strings, actually, as a saxophone player. So that was interesting. Um, and then seventh grade band. And then after that, I decided, you know what, it's time to get that master's degree. So came back, and I guess we're done with the fall semester. So I'm halfway done. So I'm very excited. <laughs> yeah, no, that's awesome. And it's cool that, like, you're coming back. Because I remember a lot of the, um, like, upperclassmen, when I was a freshman, were talking about, like, your class. And, like, I've heard, you know, about you through the, through the grapevine. Mm. <laughs> There's whispers. No. But, like, coming, coming back and um, so doing undergrad music out here and then coming back, like, do you want to talk a little bit about that? Like, how it's, sure. is it different? Like, or is it, because you're working with a lot of the same professors, but it's yeah. now it's, like, you're back and you have this experience of mm -hmm. teaching. And it's, like, hey, you know, you were right. Or, hey, what the <laughs> hey, <laughs> WTF? What is going on, you know what I mean? Yeah, so a lot of what I'm starting to learn about now coming back is everything that you learned in undergrad and how you can apply it into your own philosophical way of teaching. So when you're in undergrad, you start to learn how to like be in charge of a classroom, stand in front of your students. But I guess what I'm learning in grad school is like, why are we teachers in the first place? And what's the whole point? And what's the purpose of being a music teacher? Um, so now I have the chance to actually like th think about all the experiences that I've had and like going through all the way through elementary school and going all the way to now and kind of coming up with my own idea of like, what do I want my program to look like? That's yeah. what I'm starting to answer yeah. now. And when I was an undergrad, I was kind of just like, you know what? I kind of just want to get a job somewhere. But now I actually understand of like, if I want to change a program or emphasize or totally change the direction of a program. I have the power to do that now, yeah. which is cool. So. Yeah. So like, were there things that you were kind of worried about doing when you became a teacher that you're like, hey, this wasn't so bad or things that you were like, I wish I kind of spent more time learning about this and like focusing on this before I got to the classroom. So the one thing that undergrad and especially be, being a crane taught me was in order for you to be in front of your students, you need to have a plan. So if you come into a classroom and you don't really have a plan, odds are the lesson or whatever you're doing is not going to be good. So, and that honestly, it took me trial and error to figure out, um, okay, I'm not gonna do this for this lesson or I'm going to do this for this because it worked last time. So a lot of it was experimentation and kind of figuring out, is this going to work? Is this not going to work? Yeah. Um, and kind of just going from there, so. Yeah. All you music ed majors, do those lesson plans. Or else, I don't know. It just won't be for bed. Um, so, like, yeah, is it is it weird coming back to like from so like you spent like you know from since kindergarten, student, 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 and then you to try to become a teacher, you become a teacher, and then it's like back. To, sorry, and then it's like back to being a student again. Is that like what kind of dynamic is that like? So that's actually a very good question because I am starting to, huh feel the stress of a student again, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, because when I was a teacher, it's kind of like you have to put inside your own head of like, okay, I'm responsible and I'm in charge of all of these students. There's not just only one person you need to worry about. You have, let's say, for example, I had 76 students that I had to worry about. So you kind of, when you're standing in front of them, you kind of have to give up your ego in a yeah. way and kind of allow yourself to benefit the students. So the focus is on the students rather than um, that and it took me the actual experience of being in the classroom to understand that because like there are some things at crane they don't really teach you of like how to use a copy machine <laughs> i had to learn how to use a copy machine when i was a teacher they don't you know just like small yeah. things like that you wouldn't even think about yeah. like how to copy music how to make all these different copies of all these different instruments you know for your, for your students so yeah. 
Just like small things like that. Even though you wouldn't even think that that's like a, a big thing. Uh, yeah, I would it's, never. It's spent, I had that. to spend an hour trying to learn how to use a copy oh machine. So think about that. Huh? That's funny. <laughs> Everybody, get those copy machine handbooks ready. We got, we got an update to the syllabus for uh, <laughs> NTL. But. No, that's, that's cool. And you mentioned that you did like some string stuff, some band stuff. Was there a certain, you know, I don't want to say like pick favorites, but was there, was there a certain group that you like worked with that you were like, wow, this is something I, you know, enjoyed a lot? So my first ever job that I got was um, elementary journal music and fourth grade and fifth grade chorus. Um, now, since I was on the band track, it was very interesting because I never really thought that I would be in front of like elementary chorus students. So having the chance to actually do that was actually really, really fun because it kind of got me out of my comfort zone. I didn't really have a choice. Um, yeah. And then elementary general music is so much fun because you have the power to teach them like pretty much whatever you want. <laughs> and especially as a leave replacement teacher, um, I, had the, um, I was only there for um, one full school year. So there really wasn't anything that I could... Um, like I couldn't change the program totally, yeah. so I kind of had to like go with what the previous teacher wanted me to wanted me to go. But um, what she did allow me to do was I had the power to kind of teach these certain topics, but I could use whatever thing Wait, I wanted. Yeah. So that was really cool. I, I used a lot of YouTube. I used a lot of like popular music because that's what they listen to. So I was trying to get them involved in in it. In yeah. that way, so it must be nice to have like the power of being able to go on YouTube at school. <laughs> they used to block that whenever I, it was annoying. But um, if there's any advice you can give to like students who are in the music ed route, and like I'd say more especially the ones who are like getting ready to go student teach or like gearing up for like practicum, what's some advice like you have? So I would say um, take the time to be yourself in the classroom. Um, I know that. Sometimes when we are not sure of ourselves or we don't know what to do in the classroom, we kind of tend to fall back in these like habits. Um, I guess one other thing I would say is be confident when you're standing in front of your students. Um, you as a teacher, you have the power to kind of tell your students or you have, or you have so much um, emphasis on, on how they are as a student or even like how they um, are just in their everyday life as a student. After you experience something in the classroom where you thought, hmm, I don't know if that actually went so well, take the time to reflect on why it didn't go yeah. so well and then actually understand, okay, how can I improve on that? Or how can I change it so that's, that's not going to happen again? Because yeah. there were so many times where you're standing in front of your students and in the moment you're thinking, this is not good. This is not good. But you kind of still have to keep going with it. And then the next day, you ch change something or you add in a different activity that will kind of, I don't know, ch change the reaction of your students and you might yeah. have an easier time, so. That's cool. That's, yeah, thank you, Vern. Yeah. Um, everybody knows, guest picks the place. Right now, if you notice, a lot of you who did juries and levels this week, congratulations, this is Snell Theater. You wanna tell <laughs> us why you picked Snell? Sure, so I have a special connection with this place. Um, that's all good. Um, the only thing I would say is um, when I was an undergrad, I had um, I had the chance to do an hour recital, and my hour recital was in this very um, in this very theater, um, and that was one of the only times where I had the chance to fully show everyone in the audience, um, all my colleagues and all my family, like why I'm here and what I'm yeah. doing in the first place. So. Um, and my half hour recital, um, I did have an instrument malfunction, so I kind of felt like this hour recital in here was kind of almost like a redemption. Yeah. So I was very, very happy and very pleased in how my um, experience was when I was on stage. And also I wanted it to be a culmination of my experience. I added in percussion instruments, I added in acapella, because when I was at Crane, I was involved in so many different things. So. It just, it's always going to be a special place in my heart um, knowing that I had the chance to perform for my friends and family in this very hall. So. Yes, that is, that's super powerful. That's, yeah. that's a really great, like you mentioned, like the redemption. It's, yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's, um, so we're getting towards the end. Um, is there any, any shout outs you want to give anybody? And then like, if you have any final parting words, anything you want to say, um, you can drop, you can drop some socials in there if you want to. 
Shout out to um, everyone that's in the grad program right now. I know that the program is very small. There's like six of us or five of us in the program right now. Um, but it's a lot to try to understand like everything that we're doing as teachers and how we can yeah. change and how we can influence. So sh shout out to all of us. I know there's only five of us in the program, but if, um, and now I know that um, Jake B Barrett is going to be actually graduating this semester. So he's going to be leaving us. So I'm happy for him that he's going to have a master's degree now and he'll be on into the real world. Um, I guess that's it for now. Uh, I'm just ready for this month off, honestly. It's been a very long semester, and I'm sure for all of you, it's also been a very long. I'm sure for you, too, it's been a long semester. So yeah. kind of just having a chance to kind of relax chill. now, chill, eat some and cookies eat some cookies. Fire. Yeah, um, and not really focus on music for a little bit yeah. or, or school. Kind of just take a whole month off to yeah. kind of recuperate and then bring it all back yeah, when sure. we're done. So. This is a this is a direct order from yours truly. <laughs> uh, take time off after finals. Good luck on finals, everybody. Mm. Um, and safe travels home. Happy holidays. Happy New Year. I I'll see you before then, and I'll see you around this week. Bye.